And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. <laughs> yes. That's right. It's the Pong, baby. <laughs> Big Josh Thompson. <laughs> Big Josh Thompson and the Pong himself, John McCarthy. Well, hello, everyone. Man, it's good to have another edition of the Wing and Podcast. I'm so happy to fucking be here and talking to you. Oh, I don't know why. Bro, you I don't know why. You got a lot of heat in the comments. I guess you must have interrupted me quite a bit, so I read that. <laughs> and then it just kind of was fitting that Dave played the sound. Big John Punk. <laughs> Whatever it was. Yeah. For context on the that. Punk. Like, no one else obviously hears that, but like I've remixed the intro so that uh, just the for, I play for John and Josh to open the show, like just to open the recording with. So John and Josh yeah. hear it differently sometimes. Like uh, I'll surprise them with like Big John McCar, uh, Big Josh great. Thompson, or John the Punk McCarthy. So it just oh wait, just that's the that's the inside scoop. You know, we'll give you guys the inside. Oh, they, scoop. The whole, they don't so hear this. They, they don't get to hear that. No, no, they hear they hear the regular oh. intro. Oh, really? Okay. I always thought yeah. they heard that part. No, no. <laughs> so did I. I'm what the hell? That's just, that's just for you guys to kind of set you up to bring in the show. So that's just that. Well, you just said the right words. That's Dave setting us up for yeah. failure. <laughs> it's like, I've always it's, it's endearing. So I just let you guys uh, have your little moment in the open. I'm like, I'll just let them have this moment. Look, nice look how excited moment, they are yeah. too. Look we do have a nice little are. moment. It's it's kind of like our little chance to bond for a split second. I, I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. What, what was the one you? It was Big John. It was mm. but John the Punk Tops. It was John the Punk. Yeah. Oh, right, I'll play them right now and then I'll put them in the in the. I think it was yes. Big John the Punk. People it was here. John right, so the Punk Thompson. I think is what. So it here's was. the first one, guys. All right, here's the first one. John the Punk McCarthy. Oh, yeah, that was baby. A good one. I like and then here's that. the other one. Big Josh Thompson. Big Josh Thompson. Everyone knows <laughs> Big Josh Thompson, buddy. Oh, I love it. This is great. I'm enjoying this. We could just keep playing that over and over and over tonight. I'd be like fine with that. Just but, like but we got a lot going on. There's been, you know, we got the UFC coming up this weekend. Not a stat car, but that's common for right after a pay-per-view. Just especially after, after a big pay-per-view. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Normal. Absolutely. They know that the viewership's going to be down the week after just based off of probably the years of experience of dealing with the pay-per-views and realizing that, okay, everyone's kind of tapped out money-wise. And so give them something free, but let's make sure that they don't get too ahead of themselves. Let's give them some mediocre stuff. Don't give them the best stuff anymore because they had the best stuff last week, and it was awesome. It was a great card. But one of the takeaways from last weekend's uh, great card was MVP. Uh -oh. <laughs> and, yeah. and John and I sat up here, and we tried not to make it all about Bellator versus UFC. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, done, I'm done doing that because – I mean, there's no reason to do that anymore. Oh. There's no reason to do that anymore. Yeah. It just, we just wanted, we wanted to see, and I'm glad because there was a lot of people in the comments, a lot of people in the comments and a lot of people on Instagram. Also, I was reading some of the UFC comments. I was reading some, it's funny. We got a little love in the UFC comments too. Like, man, big John and Josh have been talking about MVP being good and he made it look easy and this and that. I, I agree. He made it look easy. I also think though, too, I'm going to, not take a, a stab at him a little bit, but I'm going to say we've seen him fight at a way better level. We've seen sure. him do a lot better. But I mean, look, look, and we, we, we talk about this all the time, Josh, and you know, when you step, no matter what, no matter who you've been fighting for, if it's, you're fighting for Ryzen, you're fighting for one, you're fighting for the PFL, for Bellator, they go to the UFC. It's a different environment. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the, they tell themselves, I have to do good. I have to, everything has to be right. And they put an added pressure on themselves and, and you could see it in the fight. Look when MVP started, he looked all nice and smooth and everything. He'd had a couple of rushes there and I saw him <gasps> yeah. gulp for air. And I went, Oh yeah, boy has the, the adrenaline flow is there. He is feeling it. And it's just part of, you know, you know, very few guys, Eddie Alvarez, when he went over to, you know, the UFC, I did his first fight. It was against Donald Cerrone. He just, you know, didn't do well. He didn't look, didn't look like the guy that I had seen so many times fighting. And it wasn't because it was against Cowboy and nothing against Cowboy. He's a great fighter. It wasn't the Eddie because Eddie was pushing. He just, everything seemed like it was a struggle. And it's because of the pressure he put on himself. It's all of that self-induced 
pressure and we all do it. Anybody can do it in any situation. Doesn't matter if it's fighting, if it's your job or whatever, you can put yourself in that situation where you make things hard on yourself because yeah. you want to do well. Yeah. It's a, it, I've been, I've had the experience of going to a lot of promotions. I fought in Pride. <laughs> yeah, I fought yeah. in Dream. I fought in Strike Force. I fought, you know, I went where the money yeah. was, and um, I've been able to fight and be successful in a lot of promotions. But the takeaway is that there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure. Sure. That fight in Pride, man, it was a lot of pressure. Like walking out was a huge arena at Nagoya Arena. My first fight there. Um, it, it's it's tough. 40-something thousand people in the arena that didn't make a peep of noise. There's a lot. It's a, it's it's, an un, it is an unusual situation to be in if you've never done it. Yeah. You that know, was my first time I was, that was my first fight, yeah. John, after I after the Eve Edwards fight. So I went from fighting in uh three three arenas. It was the Mandalay Bay twice and then the MGM, you know, packed arenas, crap, you know, sold yeah. out or almost and sold loud. out or sold out. It, just loud. And then yeah. went to Japan and fought over there, and it could hear a pin drop. I know it's a weird feeling, it, but it's it's really cool. But you got to get used to it yeah. because it will throw you off. We it saw really a little will. bit of that though too when COVID hit and the Apex and then Bellator was yeah. doing it inside the Mohegan Sun. You saw yep. some of that that feeling of um, fighters just a little bit more reserved, almost like a sparring match. They were treating it like a spar. I go, you go, I go, you go, and so it just takes. It took a little while for the fighters to get used to it. Some fighters enjoyed it. Some people, some fighters liked it because. And some fighters hated it. They're yep. like, "This is not." You Talk know? to a lot of them that hate it. Yeah, you know, there's no energy. No, nope. oh, you gotta, you gotta create the energy, dude. It's like, this is what it is. It's different when you can hear yourself breathing heavy. Yeah, you know, and and that that feels like it makes you more tired. When in reality, when you got the crowd behind you, you don't hear yourself breathing heavy, and the crowd's pumping you and making you feel like you're that you can't be stopped. I mean, there's a lot. Um, you know, I, I I go back to the Eve's not Eve's Edwards, but the uh, Hermes Franca fight. Man, I got dropped in the third round, face down, ass up, and it was like I felt like Hulk Hogan when the crowd went crazy. I felt that yeah, something Dave could get that familiar baby. with, and I was shaking, and I was getting going. I was like, yeah, Hulkamania, and then you, the and then you got hit again. And then I got hit again. Oh shit, that hurt. <laughs> oh man, I got hit a bunch more times after that. I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Oh man, I got beat up for like a good another minute and a half straight. Just beat that doesn't shit. happen to Hulk Hogan. No, it doesn't. No, he usually gets the win right after that. Yeah, yeah, he usually gets the win. But you know, I, it was the it was the the punkamanias that went wild, got me going. Ooh, <laughs> the the punkamania, the punkamania. Punk wow, that may be the Ooh, smartest thing you've ever that. said. Uh, yeah, I know yeah, what I would have been good. The punkamaniacs. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. I thought I thought it overall MVP went out there and proved how difficult of a fighter he is to face no matter where. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I give all credit to Kevin Holland. I think Kevin's a fantastic fighter. Tough. Got a, got a well-rounded game. Wrestling is still his weakest point. There's no doubt about it, but uh, his ground is good. His standup is good. He's long. He's got everything at 170 pounds. You're looking at that frame that you talk about tall, mm -hmm. long and lanky. He's got all that. He's tough. He can take a big shot, but when you're facing somebody that, covers distance and it's so hard for people to understand if they've never had it happen but when you think that you're in a safe zone he can't touch me from here and all of a sudden he's touching you it's a different feeling because you go jesus christ where do i relax and he's a he's a an awkward opponent it's not he's not awkward in what he does he's just an awkward opponent for anyone to face and you just take a look at you know I'll go to the one thing he did repeatedly in the fight, those elbows. Mm -hmm. That spinning elbow, you know, he would jump in and, and do a back spinning elbow. And how many times did he hit Kevin with it? I think three or four. You know, yeah, I mean, and you look and you go, damn. But did you, know you see that? the video that was out today of him uh, practicing that in the back with Norvenia Jr.? Of course he was <clears> practicing it. In what, people think these things just, oh, I'm just going to all of a sudden work. No, fighters practice things. They get, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do it the right time. And he goes out and he performs it. That's what Wait, happens. So you're telling me if I would have practiced the spinning back fist against Eve Edwards, it wouldn't happen? <laughs> oh, no, if you would have practiced the right defense. 
Like, so all I had to do was practice miss. throwing that thing. I guess when you missed, and it would have, it would have, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened the way it went down. I mean, I would have just slightly missed the head kick. And uh, again, again, you remember that thing about distance? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Apparently not. I took it right to the dome. Oh man. Anyways, look, look. I guess one thing that we should try to do right, right now is if you guys are um, fans of MVP, if you're not fans of MVP. The UFCs, they haven't put a ton of marketability into him. I know that they've pushed him a little bit here and there, but they haven't. I expected to have them have him come over and put a little bit more push behind him. Maybe yeah, some, but they don't have any tape on him. They're really, they were really stuck. Their hands are tied. Correct. They, yeah. they, don't, they can't get footage of him really doing a whole lot. It's so hard. That's all they could get was really old stuff. Yeah. And what they have now is they have a full fight now, which okay. is good. So now they've got some marketability for him. They got something they can market for him. But let's let's put this in perspective. We'll, let's play matchmaker, but let's also get him a, a road to the title. And right. by doing that, let's talk about the fact that he's 37 and he'll be 37 here, I think, shortly, or is 37. They 36. can't slow play him. They've got to rush no. him along. And as much as I want to see him fight Steven Thompson, I don't think that's going to be the next fight for him. He doesn't want that fight. I, and I don't he blame said, him. You know, and, and what he said was two positives don't make another positive. You know, and, and, and he could yes. be right. And, and I think he, he is right. right. And honestly, as much as, and like I said, for selfish reasons, John, you and I like that fight because we yeah, think they're, that fight. but the reality is, is when you get two point fighters that are together, it could potentially end up being a snooze fest. Could be. It could be. We, could we, be. we, we, can, we can admit that, but oh, just admit, in yeah. our minds, we believe it'll look like Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris. It's going to be a great <laughs> fight, but in reality, it's not going to be that. It's going to be probably... <laughs> Touch, touch, I go, touch, touch, you go, and it could be yeah, end up being be. that way. But if I was to really say, let's put this into, hey, we got, <clears throat> you're 37 years old. We're trying to get you one more fight to set precedence. I'd put him in, hey, who could we put him against that would give him an automatic title shot after that? And I would say Colby Covington. But can he stop Colby's wrestling? I get it, John. I understand. But Colby nah, doesn't gain I'm not, anything. I'm not going there. Colby doesn't I'm gain anything by him losing. If, Col- uh, if if he loses to Colby, Colby doesn't gain anything. He still stays away from the title. Doesn't do anything. Yeah, but, but, but hold on. <clears throat> and this is this is my problem with it. Again, Colby hasn't won. I understand that. You know, he's lost how many here, you know, his last, what, six, he's got two wins, four losses, I want to say, mm-hmm. you know, do me a favor, Dave, look that up. So I'm not screwing it all up, but it's somewhere in that area. I mean, no, I'm not saying that Colby is not a, it's not a tough matchup for him, but you take a look at, you know, lost to Leon Edwards, win against George Masvidal, lost to Usman, win against Woodley, lost to Usman. Okay, so it's not as bad as I was saying it, but it's, you know, two and two, you know, if you want to go the last four, three, you know, two and three, if you want to go the last one, give the the first uh, Usman loss Mm -hmm. to him. It's just, I look and say, okay, you want to fast track him, then put him in line. Put him in there against the guy that is undefeated. No. No no one's been able to stop. They're not taking that chance. (laughs) <laughs> they're not, Why not? T- they're not they're not going to take the chance with guys okay. going to be around for a long time when this guy could be be around for t- for a year but but that's the, this is where it works though josh hold on hold let, on let a second. i know i'm shaking my saying. head no guys for all you listeners on the yes, audio yes he he's, he's shaking he's thinking i'm wrong but this is why i say it works <clears throat> rachmanov is going to be there for how long i mean probably a good what is he 27 uh how old is rachmanov but He's going to be there for another seven, eight years. Easy. Okay. He, and we all know how good he is. He's 29. 29. Okay. So like I said, six, seven, seven eight years. years. Yeah, six, seven years. He, he's going to be there. <clears throat> so if he did lose, the UFC is okay. They still have a young fighter. Hold on. They have a young fighter that they can build right back up. He can get right back into the groove. And he can compete and possibly even be in that position where he rematches. If he did lose to MVP, he could get that rematch. And if MVP beats him, MVP is doing something that nobody else in the UFC has been able to do. Nobody else within this guy's career has been able to do. And it puts him in a position where you got to think that Rachmanov 
is the guy that everyone thinks should get the title fight. You know, Bilal's the guy in line. He's, you know, going to fight Leon Edwards, but everyone's pushing for Shavkat. So if MVP beats Shavkat, it definitely puts him right in line, right in the picture. The next fight, you could put him as the challenger for the title and everyone would accept it and love it. That would mean that there would be common sense involved, John, and that's not what we're doing here, okay? <laughs> what we're doing is we're, I'm putting my, my promoter hat on, and my promoter okay. hat says keep him away from Rachmana. Okay, that's what I, my and promoter I, understand has. Why, I, I understand why. I totally yes. understand what you're saying because it's I got a guy that's undefeated, and I can put him in as the challenger against the champion and possibly have a guy who's an undefeated champion in here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's where I'm going to go. Okay. But right now you got, you got Shavkat sitting there doing what? Because you got Bilal. I get it. I understand what you're saying, but look, this is where I'm at with this. <clears throat> I, I, I like what you're talking about. I do, but I'm putting my, I'm putting my Dana white hat on. Okay. And I'm putting my Joe Silva. Even if Joe Silva was still there. I'm putting yeah. the Joe Silva hat on. Um, and I'm simply saying there's guys that right now are not touchable is Rachmanov, leave him out. He's not going to be fighting MVP. MVP's 37 years old. I don't want my young guy that's going to be coming up for a good five or six years potentially having a bad fight and setting him back or losing to somebody like that because he's going to be gone in a year and a half. That's when one's going to be gone, one's going to stay. Him, also to uh, Jack Della Maddalena. He's not fighting him either. Okay, Those are guys that bring on, he brings, brings great fights, fights his ass off, fun to watch fight. Great fighter, not have Ian Gary, too big of a mouthpiece, you know, and uh, has a has a wife that writes books. Okay, keeps him in the spotlight. <laughs> that fight's not going to happen. Sean Brady, don't think that fight's going to happen. Those are your four guys, wow, and I think you're just you're just taking everybody yes. out of the out of the equation here. Those are the future of this division. I'm not having him fight those guys. He's too old. And I look, I, I know, I look, I, I read the comments, guys, and I see you guys get upset when I talk about my own past stuff, but I'm just putting it in perspective. I didn't fight uh, Anthony Pettis. He was 27 years old when he won the title. He was put on the Wheaties box. I was 37 years, 36 years old, about to be 37. Everyone I talked to, it told me, no, he, we need to keep him off or keep him away from people that are older. I was the next in line. That was it. There was me and the other guy, the one that never fought again. Um, God. Oh, you're talking about uh, Grant. Grant Neal, right? Grant. Uh, Grant <laughs> no, not Grant. I didn't say Grant Neal. Uh, Grant. What was his name? Come on, baby. Fuck, I forgot. Come on. I forgot. What was his name? I forgot. You remember it? I, I am uh, TJ Grant. TJ <laughs> Grant. There you go. They all sound the same. Grant, Grant. <laughs> Grant Neal, TJ Grant. Same thing. Grant same. Neal's going to kill me for saying that because they look completely <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, one, one's a light heavyweight, one yeah, with a lightweight. Exactly. <laughs> one guy's white, one guy's black. <laughs> one guy's real thick and the other one's tall one and skinny. Guy's thick, yeah. <laughs> tall and skinny. <laughs> oh, man. All right, but look, I look at those guys. I look at Shavkat. He's not going to – you're not going to match him against him. Jack Della Maddalena, Ian Gary, and, and Sean Brady. Those are the future of that division right there. Those are the guys. Nobody else. Like all of them, all the other guys in that division are 34, 35, 36, 37, kind of on their way out. They're going to try to keep MVP away from them. Okay. Because it just doesn't, like MVP but, is the unknown of he could make it me, look nasty. But let me ask you this. If you put him against Colby mm -hmm. and he beats Colby, and I, I'm, I'm being honest, I think he beats Colby. Five round Colby's fight? Got, yes. What's Three, that? Five round fight? Yes. Three round? I don't know. <sighs> it's going to be a main event fight. You know, you that. would think, yeah, you would think. So <clears throat> I would apex. say it's going to be a five round fight. Yeah. That's no. the place that if I was MVP, mm -hmm. I would refuse to refuse to fight. Yeah, You need a bigger cage. Bingo. Yeah. That's 25 foot compared to a 30 foot. That's a huge amount of space in there that you, you don't have to use. And especially against a guy like Colby that wants mm -hmm. to be the wrestler and take you down and just smother you. You can't be in that. It's got to be in the 30 foot cage. But if he did fight Colby, so let's now he beats Colby, we'll say. We'll just say it happens and you know Colby could win it, but we'll say that MVP wins it. You still got Shavkat in front of him. Mm -hmm. 
He's still there. So now you've had him fight Colby. He wins, but he really doesn't deserve the title shot. Shavkat does. Is that not true? No, no, I understand what you're saying, but Bilal and Leon should happen here within the next couple months. Yes, okay. they will. Then Shavkat will fight next for the title. But then Colby and, and Leon, or uh, Colby and MVP won't <laughs> fight probably until after around August. Maybe July, but I'd say July and August, somewhere in there. <clears throat> it won't be International Fight Week. It'll be close, but it won't be International Fight Week, I don't believe. You know, they'll probably put them sometime around August, September. Take a look, take a look at the next <clears throat> time the UFC's in England. Yeah, that might, yeah. So Shavkat and, uh, I mean, they would love to have, I think, MVP and Leon Edwards sometime in England. Oh, my God. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. And as much. That would be. A, but here's the thing. You know why, how, why rush? How why? big of a fight in England would that be? Huge. Two. Two. Huge. Guys from England. Whew. I mean, and MVP, I mean, he's he's sold out arenas there for us several times. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Leon's going to sell it out, too. The two of them together in that same arena, put them maybe on the – maybe make them the co-main event to Tom Aspinall fighting John Jones. I'm just, uh, look, uh, I'm just being the guy right now. I'm being, let, let, come I, on. I, I, I'll tell you what. I don't, I don't know if I would put uh, – I mean, as much as, yeah, Tom Aspinall versus John Jones, but two guys from England I fighting know. for the title. I know. Ooh, yeah, it's big time. That'd, that'd be tough to put that as co-main. It would be. It would be. But I mean, look, if how else would you how else would you play this? I mean, he's like I said, he'll be 37. We've got to get him. He's got to get one more win. You don't say Kobe. Bilal's no, going to be next. Shavkat. If you want to jump him all the way to Kamar Usman, is Usman going to stay at 70? Or is he going to go to 85? Like, is he healthy right now? What's going on with him? Is yeah, I, You know? And I don't think you give him Gilbert Burns. Gilbert's coming off the loss. Like no, you can't. I don't think you give him Jack De, uh, Madalena either because he's no. Like, but I, certain see, guys you, are untouchable. You did say him. what you you took away another one of mine that I would have you know said yes, and that would be Gary, only because it's a really good matchup. Yeah, I like that. I like the Ian Gary fight, but that doesn't put him one fight away from a title though. No, Col it does. Colby does though. No, it doesn't. It does if you play the cards right. Bilal's going to no, fight next. No, the only way that you can sit there and put him in as he gets a title fight with one more win, mm -hmm. one more, yeah. is Shavkat or, as you said, Kamaru. That would be it. Because you you got to take Bilal and stick him to the side. He's not. He's fighting Leon. No, okay, but John, I think are you, are you not getting? Are you not? Am I not making it kind of how I'm doing this? Are you not understanding me? Am I speaking like Spanglish or something, a different language? Like, <laughs> because if Bilal fights Leon here in the next what month or two, or not month or two, but two months, when when, when do you think they'll fight? A month or two, two months. Hold on, it hasn't even been scheduled, and they've got everything scheduled yeah. out for the next two months. So they're. I'm, I'm going to say that if they put it to say, when do you say? Uh, when do you think I don't think fight? they have May. I don't think right now. May. I would say you're looking at international end fight of May, week? beginning Three, of June. Three hundred one doesn't have a fight. Any fight? There you go. Where's that at? Where's that at? Rio. Not even that's announced. not happening there. Oh, Rio. <laughs> that's not yeah, happening. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the no, one. That's the one. Uh, Pereira's trying to get on. Absolutely. Yeah, that's bad. not happening there. You're, you're not we sending. You're not sending Leon. <laughs> no, Bilal to Rio. 303 is in Las Vegas. 302 has no destination, and that's in the middle somewhere here. Uh, we have no idea for 302. Well, Las, Las Vegas, Vegas is, uh, what's Las Vegas? Is that Apex? T-Mobile. Oh, T-Mobile? 303. You're no, not no, doing 303 no, no, no. at the Apex. He's it's talking, he's, T-Mobile. Oh, gotcha. He's talking about. Are oh, you talking about International Fight Week? No, this is June. July would be International no, Fight Week. Right? June, no, June. End of June is International Fight end, Week. End of okay. June. Okay. Yeah, that's so yeah, Yeah, that's International Fight Week. So and I could see that being on June, and then you have, I think if you have Shavka, I think if you have Lea Bilal and Leon fight, the International Fight Week, big card, big, big, big weekend, and then you have Shavka probably fight on the same card, I don't know, maybe Usman, and then right around that same time, you have MVP fight Colby. And then Shavkat wins, and then you have, and Shavka goes ahead and fights for the title next, if he beats Kamaro. You know, or if he doesn't fight, if he doesn't fight and he just sits it out and MVP fights, I think you still have Shavkat ended up going next in line for the title shot. And Why? Then... Oh, hold on. I want you to think about this. You're telling me mm -hmm. that you're okay 
as a matchmaker putting Shavkat against a 36 to 37 year old Kamaru Usman, but you're not okay putting him against a 36 year old MVP. I think because it's the work that's been laid already within the promotion. That's why. If I'm going to lay it that way, like, look, Kamaru Usman's already been the UFC champ multiple times yeah. over. It's really more of a stepping stone for him. Him losing to a, a Bellator guy or having a bad showing. I'm just, and it, he's not a. I, see, I get okay. it. I get Hold it, on. John. I get this it. It's all bullshit about Bellator it is. guy. It is. It is bullshit. He is an, he is an MMA fighter he who is. is fighting under the UFC's promotion he and is. banner. He is. That's it. Yes. I agree with you. 100% agree okay. with you. But my point is that he hasn't laid the groundwork within the promotion. If I'm the matchmaker, I need to see one more fight before I start giving you my young guys to fight. Whereas Kamar Usman, everyone's going to go, he beat Kamar Usman. The average everyday fan has not seen MVP fight. The casual fan has not seen MVP fight. I can't have my num one of my number one guys lose to MVP if no one's ever seen him fight outside of the Kevin Holland fight. That's just a fact. I, I, I mean, like I could say all the great things about Bellator and what we thought, what we thought we built there, and this and that. But guess what? A lot of the cat, a lot, a lot of the nothing to do with Bellator. Yeah, it does though, because the casual fans have not seen MVP fight. For, so if Shavkat was to have a shitty fight against him, or not look good, or even lose, then you hold basically on. are losing something. Okay, that you could have built on, against Kamar Usman. Okay, then let's go. Let's go back in time. Because there was this guy named Michael Chandler that came to the UFC, and his first <clears throat> opponent was Dan Hooker. Yeah, and he had a really great performance. He did knocks knocks out Dan Hooker, and who was his next goddamn opponent? Yeah, it was Charles, right? Yes, for what <clears throat> was that a vacant title or was that a yes? It was a vacant, it was a vacant title. title. Yeah, I guess for and then but then the other thing though too is. I can I get what you're saying, but let me rebuttal okay. that as well. Let me play devil's advocate right. again. Go ahead. <clears throat> Michael Chandler could say that he was the Bellator world champion. He could also say that he'd beat Eddie Alvarez and be, that was a former UFC champion. I have marketability there. Come on, let me put my promoter hat on for you guys, okay? That's what I'm doing around here. I, 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 look, this is my division, okay? You, no one's going to come at me and talk about my division. I know about my division. I'm coming at you on this one. That's the way I looked at it with, from that. I, I understood. Okay. All right. All right. Look, Bellator, former champion, then beat Eddie Alvarez. I mean, he has a win over a former UFC champion. There's marketability there. MVP came up short every time he fought for the Bellator title. Just styles, make matchups. We know that. And it just didn't work out for him. That being said, him coming in, they don't want to take a chance of Shavkat losing Jack Della Maddalena, Ian Gary, or um, Sean Brady. I think those guys will be off limits because of the age thing. That's okay. I'm sticking to that. Oh, you can stick to I it. I would love to see Rachmanov and MVP. I would love to see Jack De La Maddalena and MVP. I would love to see, especially the Ian Gary one, I would love to see. I just don't think we're going to see it because they've got years of trying to market those guys. Years. They're going to make a lot of money off of them. And a loss to a 37-year-old is not what they're trying to start it off with. <laughs> but there's so much time I left know. for every one of those guys. There is. There is. It's a lot easier for me to market the O. For some of them, right? What's well, uh, uh Ian, yeah, yeah. Ian Gary's undefeated. Yep. Shavkat's undefeated. undefeated. Those are nice, but like Sean Brady, he's got one loss. Sean Brady, got one loss. Yeah. Big deal. I get it. it I, it's the one. It's the one thing that I love about MMA over boxing is we've never gone off of that. Oh, you've got to be undefeated, twenty and zero, and all that bullshit. So you have guys not fighting anybody because they have to get to a certain record. No, man, we, we got we have young fighters who are killers facing other killers. Mm -hmm. And that O could go. Yeah. And it's nice to see. So I'm not in disagreement uh with you in that position at all. I believe that that's the great thing about MMA <clears throat> is that in boxing, when the O goes, people just kind of push them to the side like they're nobodies. Yeah. yeah. You know, and they want to continue to say that that fighter is the best because he's got he's he's undefeated. He's undefeated against 20 chumps. Okay, and he's 22 and 0. Okay, he's beaten 20 chumps and he beat two guys with winning records. And we've seen it over the years. I mean, I'm a huge Julio Cesar Chavez fan, but let's be honest. I mean, oh man, he had a lot of fights. Yeah, a lot of guys fights against go, guys with losing records. Yeah. And so, um, 
th- that's one thing I don't with MMA. We don't get a lot of that because not a lot of them have a big extensive amateur career. That's one. Exactly. Two is they jump right into being pros and they'll take their L's when they're younger, as long as they get on track and start building, or they'll be undefeated for a while. And then they'll go back to if they if they lose one, no one forgets about them. They realize how good that fighter is. So we keep them around. We don't just throw them away thinking they're worthless. But that's the benefit, John, of the way the UFC and the way MMA does their fight cards. We can't get we can't afford to get rid of them. We need 14 fights on a card or we need 12 fights on yeah, a card. Because MMA MMA fans are used to having Absolutely. a card that has a ton of really good fights. Yeah. I'm not trying to watch four fights and pay ninety dollars for it and snooze fest. Yeah. That's what we're getting with the with a lot of these main boxing cards, and that's what the downfall of boxing is over MMA. I want to see these young fighters come up as prospects. I'm sorry, but guys like Ian Gary and Sean Bray, they wouldn't Jack Della Maddalena would have never made it on a main card of any boxing match ever. You'd never hear about them. You know, and then all of a sudden they just pop up on a you know, okay, you know what? This guy's gonna now be the co-main event. You'll get him, and then one day he'll be the main event. We get to see these guys at a, at a young portion of their career, the young part of their career, come up and see them grow. Yeah. And that's what the True. great part about all this is, man. That's why we have 12, 13, 14 good fights on a card. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So I agree. But I, I think if the UFC is smart, I, let me just put a button on this. If the UFC is smart, they'll try to get MVP to Leon as fast as possible to try to get sure. that fight to happen in the UK. That's yeah. the, that. Maybe even maybe even shelving Shavkat, to be honest, for one fight. And and I know like, I'm not trying to overstep him much, but they got they got to try to make that big money fight over in the UK because they also know PFL and Bellator are making a push into the UK market. Not that they're competing. I'm not trying to say that. No, but I'm trying to say on. that. No, let's let's be honest. They are competing. They are. You know, yeah, as, yeah. as far as I'm not going to sit here. When you look at how well they're doing in the European countries, like Ireland was owned by the UFC with mm-hmm. Connor, and then everything kind of slowed down, and Bellator took it over to where, you know, you didn't see the UFC going back there, and it, it was, it, it was a mistake. They should, mm-hmm. you know, they had the opportunity to do Connor at at a place called Croke Park, which is a huge stadium there. Man, they should have done that. Mm-hmm. They, you 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 want to talk about? <clears throat> something that would live on forever in Irish sports lore. That would have been one of the things, man. You can't, you, there's no way of topping that. Yeah. But I mean, they, they've made great decisions and they've, they've uh, fumbled well, it sometimes. Well, but, we, we all fumble. Yeah. That's just I mean, the way it is. Let me speak for yourself. I never did. But. Yeah. They, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, um, but look, there's also, um, before uh, before we move on, go to OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. OnlyFans.com slash weighing in. I want to thank you guys so much for following us over there. John, I'm going to do a live chat tomorrow at some point in time. Probably, I want to try and do it in the evening, though. So okay. probably sometime in the evening. Uh, I'd say probably like around, let's say, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. 8.30 p.m. Or are you going to try to join or what? I'll Either. join. You got to teach me how. Okay, I'm we'll try to student. figure this out. But I'd say, let's yeah. say, let's say, eight. You know, I, I can build you a house. <laughs> I can build you furniture for the house. Yes. You put those damn freaking computers and shit in front of me. I'm lost. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, I posted up some some clips on the on the onlyfans.com slash weighing in. But I'm gonna try to do my live chat tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central Time. 8 p.m. Central Time at onlyfans.com slash weighing in. Subscribe to us over there. It is free, guys. Uh, I noticed that Kamar Usman's brother, he's on there now. Uh, Andrea, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, how do you Mohammed. say her? Yes. He's on there. And then uh, Andre, Andre, Andre Lips- Lipsky. Is it Andre Andrea Lipsky? Andre, Andre, Andrea. Andrea. Is it Andrea? Uh, Adriana. 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 Okay. Adriana Lipsky. She's on there as or well. Adriana. I just saw her uh, do it. And then obviously you have DJ Demetrius Johnson. He's on there. He's a new ad to it. Uh, Luke Rockhold, AJ McKee. Brent Primus, Chris Cyborg. Um, there's uh, several other fighters that are just skipping my my head right now. But uh, yeah, the Queen of Violence, Lipsky, is on there as well. So look, there's plenty of MMA fighters for you on there. They also do some uh, extra content on there. DJ does, apparently he does a bunch of, I haven't seen his page yet, but he does uh, content in terms of showing techniques. He also does a lot of his gaming stuff on there now. 
So he's like showing his video gaming stuff. So if you guys follow him at all, check it out over there. And uh, hey, but I'm gonna do my live stream tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Time. You guys can come on, ask any questions you want. Let's talk about UFC 299. Maybe even talk a little bit about UFC 300. And we'll talk about Islam potentially fighting Dustin Poirier next. And skipping over the Justin Gaethje situation. So who knows? Hey, there's no ski. Like, that's called timing. It, it is. It really I, I is. Lo I love when, when people get all, you know, oh, and he's, he's ahead of him in the rankings. He beat him last. You're right. He is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes timing is just everything. Yeah. And you have Justin Gaethje, who is pretty specific. Don't ruin my story. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I, am I screwing <laughs> up here? I'm going to shut up now so Dave can give us something. Okay, give us a story here, buddy. <laughs> what do you got for us? No, 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 no. You guys are going to talk about the fake card. I'm uh, that yeah. does you guys John just gave you the teaser, right? So you guys, ah, a teaser. So, I like it. We're going to just get a teaser. Like so it. so go look for the Dustin Parry Islam video on our YouTube channel. It probably drops on Thursday sometime Ooh. on Thursday. So ah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, Dave. Nah. No, no like, John, I appreciate don't. the teaser. That was, a, that was a great little plug right there. Didn't realize right, he was go. doing it, but he's doing it. Yeah, see this. <laughs> Stupidity works in certain ways. Oh, no. All you, right. get, you, guys, you guys are just too passionate. I just can't control it. Nah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go UFC Fight Night. What is this? This is a UFC Fight Night at the Apex. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88 or 89? 88. Why are you questioning that? I told you. <laughs> well, normally, it it, 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 normally, it ends with the it, number. Normally, it ends with the same number. It, it, it. That's the, Get in that's my belly. Scottish version. <laughs> it, it. <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounded like. I don't I don't want your money. I want your baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how, that's how podcast Dave sounds. Oh, that's great. That's so great. I, I mean, I hope Lincoln... Uh, and Benji end up talking like that. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> no, they, they talk with an English accent right now because they're watching this English show. And so uh, they say, uh, the guy the guy in the show says, hello, boys and girls. And so they say it like, uh, an, they say it hello, more boys like MVP and girls. than they do like me. Right uh, now. Is, it, uh, is that like Peppa Pig? No, it's called uh, Stephen Maggie. Uh, gotcha. I'm sure the dads on here will know what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> uh, we don't do a whole lot of TV in the house, so it's. We don't do any TV, any video games, or iPads during the week. It's definitely a Benji age thing, and it's yeah. newer, so that's probably why your yeah, kids yeah. don't know what it is. No idea. All right, let's go. Tai Tua Vasa versus uh, Marcin Tarbura. Main event, the heavyweights. The heavy's getting after it, maybe. The heavy's I think this is going to go the five rounds. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no damn... Watch, I just jinxed it. Watch, no I damn know, way this thing goes five <laughs> rounds. There's just no way. No, I don't think so. I, I'm gonna, like, I, would you again, take the under? What would you take the under on? Two rounds? Three rounds? Well, it depends on what it was at. Dave, can you pull up what the odds are on this thing? I want to see what the under is. I bet you the under is probably two rounds. Three. I mean, I would say it's... No, I would say if, if, if the under is at two and a half, you, you've got a hell of a decision to make. Yeah, it's probably it's, two and a half. Oh, okay. So you want to put that there? There's the, your money the, line. Is, yeah, is, the money line is... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go also Ty two is with, the, is, with Ty. is the favorite. <clears throat> Although Ty's had a couple bad finishes the last couple times. Yeah. But. But. It doesn't matter. It, it's the way he fights. It's just the way if he, he fights. Yeah. It's like, yeah. He could win it. He could lose it. But I'm going to say, like, Marcin, Marcin Tarbura, he's someone who comes forward. He takes. He can take big shots. If he can get Ty down, he can maybe go. control the top position. If he can get to the top position for any yeah. length of time in that first round, he's going to change the course of that fight. One and a half rounds. I tell you, okay, I told you. I said, man, yeah. they're, going make, they're going to make it somewhere around two and a half. See, one and a half, that's a tough, it's, that is, it makes it questionable. I'm going to go, I'm going to probably go. You're going to go the over. I'm gonna, you're going to go the over? Uh, I'm going to go the under. <laughs> I, think, I think Ty's going to get it done. You think Ty's in a, in a round? That I, yeah, I think I think he'll get it done. I think you know it, this is not as easy a fight for Ty as people are thinking. No, it's not. I think Marcin Tabura. First off, he's he's he gets overrun by Mammoth and yeah. guys with a ton of power. Okay, that's the guys that he he gets overrun in the stand up where he can't stand up mm -hmm. to what they're doing. But he's great at. He's not going to win the first round. And he doesn't need to. He's great at, okay, I'll weather the storm. I'll weather the storm. 
I'll get my little bits in here. Yeah, I'm going to take some shots, but let me get to the second round because if there's one thing that he has in this, he does have a gas tank. Mm. He can go. This is a guy that doesn't get tired. And I've seen him multiple times get hurt in fights, have guys blow the gas tank trying to get rid of him, and all of a sudden he's still there, and he comes back and wins that fight. So, you know, it could be the tie ends up putting him away. And if he, if he does, I think it is in the first round. Yeah, he's going to have to. But it's if it gets out of that first round, it's going to be a tough fight. Yeah, the over is minus 180. The under is plus 140. But, you know, I'm going to take the guy with the dogs, man. I'm going to take the guy, Tatu Avasa. <laughs> I'm going to take him with the dogs. It really just comes down to how he, if, how he starts off the round. Pull up his last fight, Dave. Tatu Avasa's last fight. Trying to remember off the top of my head. He lost to Volkov, Volkov. and then he lost to yeah. Pavlich, then he lost to Sirogon. All three, three with one. Well, two by knockout and one by submission. Yeah. Was the Volkov the is he, But the Vol the Volkov was he exalt. couldn't get to him. Yeah. He, he couldn't get to him. He he's, he's he's lunging in trying to get to him. Volkov is so long and mm -hmm. and he's got good stand up. And that's where if Ty can bring you into the brawl, he's got a good chance of winning because that's his style. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. He's a brawler. He's got to make it dirty. He can do that with Marcin. He can. Marcin's going to try to slow it down. Marcin's going to try to, you know, hang on, make him. his little his little moves here and there, and and bring it into the second round. But you look at all those guys. Those are guys that, for, first off, Cyril Gunn is a tech, technique fighter. He's a technical fighter. He's very hard to hit. He's got good power. You know, heavyweights have good power. But he's got good power. He's got good movement. And he's, he's not more of an athlete. That's gonna, he's not going to fall out of what his game plan is to fall into the brawl. Yeah, Pavlich is a guy that you look at. He could fall into the brawl, but he has so much power that it just takes one and then it's over. Yeah, yeah. Volkov I, more technique. Yeah, and the reach, that reach, yeah. and the thing with Volkov is that he knows how to use his length to his advantage. His whole career is being able to use that to his advantage. The knees up the middle to the face, the push kicks to the thigh to the body. He's utilized that basically his whole career. That's how he's kept off of his back so long. That's how he's been able to have such a long career. Yeah. Um. Well, Cyril gone. He's just really athletic. Grit, light on his feet for a big guy they shouldn't move like that and he's yeah. light on his toes got quick hands quick kicks moves around really well it's not the easiest guy to take down even though john jones made it look easy he's not the easiest guy to take down he has some athleticism to get himself back up to his feet he's a fantastic fighter he's got to remedy the the takedown situation a little bit more you know for the top level guys but outside of that i look at it i look at with cyril gone i look at him being the champ one day I really do. His athleticism, his ability to stick and move, his his strength, his size, all of those things. I look at him potentially being the champ someday. But Ty Tuovasa is someone that just, like you said, he likes, he encourages the brawl. And Tybura is someone who is there to be hit. He, he's he's not gonna he's gonna not gonna really try to stay on the outside like a Volkov. You know, um, he's okay with getting hit. He'll he'll take one to try to deliver one. He'll take two to try to deliver one. Yeah, um, but can he, will. can, can he deal with the hand speed though of Ty? Cause Ty will hit him two or three times in a row before he's able to put his hands on him. That's where I think the problem is going to lie. How many shots can Ty Bora take before he's able to well, grab a hold of Ty to You're saying exactly it. It's he's going to grab a hold of him. Yep. That's his whole plan is mm -hmm. to slow him down, get him tired, put weight on him, you know, get his arms full of, you know, blood. So they're a little bit slower. His hands aren't as quick. Mm -hmm. And then just slowly and systematically just take over in the fight. That's just going to be his game plan. You know, yeah. It's not a bad game plan to have in the apex in that 25 foot ring. Yeah. You know, Ty's going to want to have a little bit of, you know, he's going to want to keep a little bit of distance so he can strike and he can explode. Yeah. Like Marcin's going to try to, he's going to try to suck that space out and control it the whole way. We'll see what happens. But it's a, it's a good heavyweight fight. It's just one that you look at in the end. 
neither one of these guys are going to be fighting for a title. It's that same game plan that you had when you and I were in the cage together. Just try to like grab a hold of me <laughs> and hang dude, on that's me. That's it. And I was dude, just, hang on you a little bit. I was just and then sticking just, and moving, just ba ba ba, just touching and touching and touching. Yeah. I had to be careful. I didn't break my hands on your big head, but it was all right. We were just ba ba ba, boom boom boom, bang 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 bang. bang. Yeah, that's what it was like. Okay, super okay. super easy. All right. All right, let's go. Uh, Brian Battle versus uh, how do you say his uh, Ange Ange Luce? Yeah. Lusa Lusa Ange Lusa. Uh, Brian Battle has has absolutely shut everybody up. You know, he came off of the Ultimate Fighter, and people were you know ah oh, they still weren't impressed. He was the guy that didn't really have any kind of you know experience coming into it. Didn't know really a lot of what he was doing. He's a good fighter, man. He is, he is, he's tough. He'll, he's got a good submission game. He's got good stand up. This guy has been fantastic. I don't know why everyone is, is so against him when I, when I talk to him about that. Ah, oh, you know, he's, he's just not that good. He is that good. He's a good fighter. Well, John, I was, I don't want to say he wasn't that good. I just want to say he didn't do anything that really stood out to me. Okay, and, and I think when you were, I felt like you were attacking me when you said, "Ah, oh, people say, people say." No, 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 no. Just trust me. No, no, no. I've had other people talk. You know, I've talked yeah. to them about Brian Battle, and they've really all. It's I'm. I'm like, man, why is it I'm the only one that seems to think this guy can really fight? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that he's a championship material at this moment, but he keeps getting better all the time. He does, and he believes. I know. There's a lot though that he needs that the for me, I feel like there's a lot he needs to clean up. He, of course. He's still very young. I get it. He's young in the age. He's young in the, uh, his ability to, or his learning um, capabilities, I should say, where he's got plenty of time to still grow and get better. I just haven't seen him do, I guess he just doesn't look as impressive to me as I've seen some of the younger talent I come think, along. And I think a lot of it, it's body style. It's the way he looks. He's a guy that lost a lot of weight mm. at one time in his life, you know, and that's Maybe. that's why that's how he got into MMA. He was fat. Mm. He gets into MMA to lose weight. Is that, Look what, at is what that he's why done. you got into MMA? It's exactly why I got into <laughs> MMA. Didn't work though. It's, uh, <laughs> I I enjoy listening. Like I enjoy watching him fight. I do. I think he's a scrapper. I think he's someone who brings it every time. He doesn't try to hold anything back. He's got that grit in him, obviously. Um, do I, do I see the potential of being a world champion? I don't see it yet, but it doesn't mean that it can't happen. Well, I mean, to sit there and say, do you see it yet? Come on. I'm asking John, look, look. He's, he's young in his career still. I mean, there's I get what so you're saying, but look, look, if we were to say him and Sean O'Malley came up around the same time. Oh, no, 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 no. When, when did Sean O'Malley come in? Take take a take a look at Brian Battle when he was in Tough. What year was that? Uh, Brian, Brian Battle, Battle and Tough. Off. Brian Battle. Okay. Brian Battle. And well, you tough. can just take a look at his his record. It'll, okay. it'll, it'll, yeah, it'll yeah. put it on there. And then me. Sean O'Malley came in. Uh, when was his first fight in the in the UFC? Uh, well, his Brian first... Battle and Tough was uh, it looks like twenty twenty one, right? So twenty twenty one. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sean O'Malley Sean was twenty twenty. New 20, 2018. Oh wow, 2017. 17. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. It just seems like it's all cluttering together now, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's all cluttering. So 2021. Yeah. 20, 2017. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're covering my. Look you guys know COVID started like uh, four years ago today. It feels like it was almost like a lifetime ago, right? It's so, today, I mean, you know what? This Today's the, not the 13th. The 12th, so the 12th. it's the 13th. Is yeah, it's March yeah. 13th yeah, when so. we all got evacuated to come home. Yeah, so like these four years have just disappeared, man. So that's yeah. why it probably feels like 2017 was 2021. <laughs> the shittiest four years ever. <laughs> <laughs> Are we well, getting into the, politics now? Was, Let's it, go. It was only the shittiest uh, two months if you were in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's true. I mean, it wasn't much longer. Florida did Texas. it right. Yeah. I'm just, it's fucking crazy, man. Anyways, I don't want to get into the politics. You know, okay, no, I, hold on. I got to get into the politics now. God. Before I get into Angelusa, and I heard something that I looked at and I go, you know what? That's fucking so true. It's crazy. What is it? So go ahead. Go ahead, John. 
Name me, name me the four most populated states in the United States. Populated right now or populated? No. Okay. The four most populated states. California being one. Yep. Texas, Florida. Yes, yes. And New York. Come on, the easiest one. Uh I, I would have thought that plenty of people had left that place already. No, hold on. It's so okay. small and dense, like it's so so those are the those are the four most populated states. Okay. Okay. And right now, two of them have mass exodus from them. Mm-hmm. They're both blue states. Mm-hmm. And everyone in those blue states are running to those two red states. <laughs> Let's see. Where's the problem? <laughs> you know, that's where you look and you go. Kind of answers a lot of it, doesn't it? Yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot that goes on. The the one thing that's, man, I don't want to get into this. But Next hold point. it, hold it. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Where did you live? California. Where are you living now? <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Texas. It's. I love it. Hey. I did, the the dude told me that, and I sat there. I went, wow, that's that's pretty goddamn true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I've yeah. got, like I said, like Rich Child lives here now. Bobby Lashley lives here now. Ryan Grab lives here now. I mean, there's so many people mm-hmm. that I know that moved. That moved. I mean, a that, lot of my neighbors here, they're from New York. Yeah. A lot of them. Bingo. So the majority of the guys, I mean, probably they're telling want... you they're not happy with what's happening in those states. Well, it's, there's a lot to it. There's, a, there's a lot to it. There's, oh, look, excuse me. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Uh, Ovid St. Preux making his uh, return <laughs> back to the cage. Hold it. You forgot about Angel and okay. what he's so good at. He's good, like, man. Angela, he, he's fast, everything. He had, the first time I ever saw him fight was against uh, Jack Dale and Madalena mm-hmm. when he fought on the Dana, uh, Dana White Contender Series. Mm-hmm. And uh, he lost that fight. That's one of his losses. But he showed a lot. He's tough as hell. Yeah. And he's come into the UFC and he's done really well. And he, he, that's a great fight, I think, between the two of them. Yeah, it's gonna I mean, be it's, it's gonna be a good fight. I think they're evenly matched. It's they're ten and two, ten and three. I mean, they're gonna be evenly matched. I think the speed's obviously gonna go to Lusa. I think battle's gonna be the guy that's gonna have to grind him out. He's gonna have to get to the clinch, get to the uh, get to making it a grimy, dirty fight. Try to drag this thing to the ground, utilize his grappling, his control, and maybe hit a submission. That's where he's gonna have to get it. If he wants to get this yeah. win, yeah. but John, where the hell is o- uh, OSP? OSP, in? he's in Knoxville. Jeez. Where's he? Come on, baby. I know, but he's Tennessee, Tennessee through and through. When did he's he... a ball. Oh, he fought. He fought in twenty twenty three. Jeez, yeah, baby. He lost to Felipe Lins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty three. Who did when did we for that? Twenty twenty two. Okay, so he's his, taking his one last fight a year. once a year. Once a year. Yeah, think about it. Think about where who his last win was against. Great, yeah. great. You know, as far as you know, the name yeah. Shogun Hua, but at that point, Shogun is you know not the same guy. Yeah. You know, as a fighter, he had lost a lot, and so OSP's got a lot to you know prove, and this is not an easy person to prove it against. Scroll down. How Kennedy, old is he? OSP? Yeah. Oh, he's 40. 40. He's 40. Yeah. 40. Man, he's been around a lot. He was in Strike Force. John, I with know. you for how long? John, I know. I know this. Yeah. He was uh he, he was highly touted because he was so athletic. He was so good. Jeez. He played at football at University of Tennessee. Yep. Everyone talked about his athleticism. There. He didn't look great out there, but man, he had power. He had ways of taking a shot and giving a shot. He he utilized his range pretty well. Yep. Uh, he left himself out of position a lot, but he always seemed to recover and and get wins. Yeah, people didn't. If you try, if you tried to put him in a guillotine, he would von flew you or, yeah. or or OSP you, as a lot of people wanted to. Don't change try it and to. steal the name, like these guys, man, trying to steal the name. Thank you. Okay, here, here's a little story for that von you know, flew. I don't know if you, I I don't know if you knew Jason. I did. Yeah. Okay, Jason was in season two of The Ultimate Fighter. Right, and, and he comes up to me and he says, "He says, hey, I, I have, I have something you know, I've been doing, I've been really working on." He says, and it really works, right? And I said, "Yeah." I said, yeah. and he says, "I want to know what you think because I think people are going to get confused by what's going on." I said, "Yeah." Well, so he, he says, "Well, here, you know, later, you know, put me in a guillotine, right?" So I put him in the guillotine, right? And he says, "And I, and I have to go to the sound, and, and I'm just going down," and he, you know, he starts to put pressure on me, you know, and. 
<laughs> pop my hand out because you know my arms here and he goes oh, yeah he goes that's the problem in doing it he goes i need you to put a glove on <laughs> but it's true yes i it's agree why it's why the freaking thing works yeah. in mma so well is that glove makes a huge difference yep you know and so we went i went and i get hit a glove put a glove on and he does and i can't pop my hand hand out mm -hmm. right and i go that's that's really neat he goes he says he goes he says but you know i, I want to start getting people you know officials so they know what's going on so you're not going to think that i'm in trouble you know that the other person's in trouble i said dude it's an awesome hole i said good luck with it right goddamn guy fucking actually <laughs> made it work so i was like dude i give him full credit i need I start when I started doing, you know, teaching other officials and everything, you know, I always put the name to to the person that did something. And, you know, everyone would talk about that choke and everything. I said, that's the Von Flew choke, man. He's the guy that fucking made it in MMA. You know, you know OSP funny? has had a more probably more submissions yeah. with it than anybody, but it is the Von Flew. You know what's funny is it that the one guy that didn't get a lot of love for the the bringing the, that new guillotine in where you kind of push his was Cody McKenzie. Oh, Cody McKenzie had some They never ungodly, came up with a name for that. Ungodly freaking. Well, do you remember? Um, oh, man, I'm going I'm <clears> to <throat> screw this up. Oh, dude, he was from Idaho also. Um, 135-pound Bantamweight. Uh, Scotty Jorgensen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You remember him and his 10-finger? Yes, 10-finger guillotine. Dude. He was so good at it. Mm -hmm. So good at it, man. He, he, if he latched that thing on and got his hips in the right spot, you were screwed. Yeah. And I, I watched one guy actually climb the fence on with his feet over and go <laughs> over the top, you know, to, to get away from it. It's like, man, that dude was that 10 finger guillotine. He had sometimes guys just have a submission that they are so good at. Mm -hmm. But Cody McKenzie, I remember Cody McKenzie, uh, he, he was in the Ultimate Fighter. And George St. Pierre, he choked George choked the shit out of him <laughs> because right. George was like, oh, you can do this. Yeah. And he says, here, let me show you. And Cody says, do you want me to put it on you? He goes, oh, yeah, put it on. Mm -hmm. No, nope, couldn't get out. <laughs> it's like, don't let him put it on you, man. Some guys are good. Yeah. And, and, G and GSP, he knew he knew that going into it. His oh, yeah. His first couple, what, the first or second fights, like, stay, keep your neck away because the guy fought. One of GSP's guys fought him. He goes, hey, keep your yep. neck away, keep your neck away. I remember watching that. And the guy went right in there and got guillotined. Yeah. <laughs> like that. He's like, dude, it was, it was, you know, let's be honest. It was Cody McKenzie was not the greatest overall fighter. He didn't look, man, he didn't look the part either. But man, he, if he got a hold of your neck yeah. in any situation with a guillotine, mm -hmm. you were going to have problems. It's, it's funny you say that because there's guys that I train with, Mike Swick being, the, my neck's probably fucked up because of him. He tried to hit that shit from everywhere. And I yeah. and for me and him, we always had a little back and forth. I don't know what it was, but I never wanted to get tapped out by that guy in a guillotine. Never. <laughs> I just, I, I was, I, because honestly, I got to be honest, I was considered to be one of the better guys, if not the best guy in grappling in terms of jujitsu wise that we had. John Fitch and I were neck and neck. Or John was obviously bigger than me, but it was something just bothered me to have to tap to Mike Swick. So I just never did. <laughs> it was a, it was I never wanted to get choked by that guy. So my neck is probably paying the price right now because yeah. of it. But you know, normally in practice, you were you're supposed to tap to those type of things. Never, never yeah. did I want to. But uh, I, 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 I got to give Cody some some credit on that. Cody and I, oh yeah, he, he always had bad. beef with was... me. I never had beef with him, but he always had beef with me because I was supposed to fight his boy uh, Lyle Beerbomb. Oh, Lyle. Yeah, and so he was calling me out, talking fancy all pants. trash. Yeah, fancy pants. So, <laughs> but yeah, all that stuff. But uh, but no, I got to give him credit because I remember when that thing came around. It was he would get it in deep, and then he'd push the back of the hand, the knuckles oh, yeah, like, into the would. side of the neck. Yeah, and that was it. Was nasty. That was good. Oh, there yeah. was another guy. That, he had all he had all kinds of different techniques with it. Oh yes, he did. He did a couple of different ones. I mean, it was, they all worked for him. So I was I had a buddy that wrestled at Stanford. And his name was Todd Sermon. He died in Las Vegas on, on New Year's Eve. Oh, that a, was a... I, I know, he I grabbed know the, who, he, I know who he was. climbed the telephone electrical. pole. They were grease telephone poles, and he grabbed the electric wire. He was getting the crowd going right before New Year's Eve. 
And uh, it was a buddy of mine. And uh, he wrestled at Stanford. But I watched him choke the shit out of Frank Shamrock in the wrestling room. So he had like a really deep um, chat, like a sternum cavity. He could suck his wind in. He would practice his breathing before practicing breathing was cool. He was one of those guys that would like go out in the mountains and kind of hang out out there for a couple of weeks and do his breathing and all this other stuff. But he was a really good wrestler. I think he took fourth or fifth at nationals NC two A's and uh, he placed two years in a row. his junior, senior year. Fantastic guy. Super good guy. But he, choked the shit out of frank he put ch- he put frank's head inside his abdomen Rib cage and sucked in and yeah and they basically got him in a front guillotine and just fucking rolled him like a 10 figure guillotine right underneath the chin and all of a sudden frank was fucking dead limp <laughs> just <laughs> choked out clean right before right before the tito fight it was literally like, oh, really? like two weeks before the tito three weeks before the yeah, tito right. fight that's fucking, a confidence builder. All you hear is Frank going. <laughs> 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 fucking great, man. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, Ovis and Prue versus Kennedy and Chick. How do you say his name? And Chickawoo. And Chickawoo. And Chickawoo. Uh, Kennedy, man, he's not bad, dude. He's the guy no, that he's does, got length. He doesn't he's got a lot going for him. But he's like another guy that doesn't look like he's going to be like, he looks kind of like gangly and. Doesn't look like he's going to, but man, he's got some power. He finds ways to use that push kick up to the gut. He just does things. And you're like, all right, it's working for you. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's almost a little bit like a Volkov style fight. You know, yeah, Volkov looks similar. a little bit cleaner. That's, that's a, it's a good comparison though, yeah. because many times you look and you go, what is it? What are you doing? Yeah. And he comes through and fight. He, he, he tends to get hurt in his fights. Yeah. You know, and you know, and that's the one thing he's got to, you know, you can only take so many of the big shots, yeah. but I think this, you know, and, and look, and I, I love OSP as far as, you know, what he's done in the sport and he's always been a great guy. <clears throat> this should be Kennedy's fight. Should Kennedy's be. faster than him now. Um, and OSP doesn't get off. Well, he, he, he's waiting all the time, waiting, mm-hmm. waiting, waiting, waiting. It's not a good place to be in. So look for Kennedy to do well in this fight. Yep. Because as you get older, man, everything seems like it's coming a lot faster at your head. And so you're yeah. constantly waiting for the right opportunity, the right moment. I'm going to go now. I'm going to go now. But then the moments pass you by because the other person is faster than you. Been there. Done that. Yeah. Uh, John, the let's, I'm going to go through some of these. What The, the uh, Mershart fight versus Barbarina. Mershart versus Barbarina. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. You're going to see Brian Barbarina trying to keep it on the feet as much as mm-hmm. possible. And he is great there. He's a brawler. He's fun to watch. He is a he will not give in, but his one weakness is guys that are really good on the ground. Yeah. And if there's one thing I'll give Jerome Mershart, he he is absolutely a whiz with his submissions. He's he is really good. His positioning's fantastic. So it's a great contrast. Both guys, veterans, you know, if it's if if the fight hits the ground, look for Gerald to be doing well. If the fight is staying on the feet, Brian Barbarain is your guy. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going to be a hundred percent transparent with you guys. Christian Rodriguez, great fighter. I think he's a fan. I think he's going to be a bright star coming in the future. I don't know Isaac Dolgarian. I don't know him, John. Okay. Um, I, I Christian is exactly what you're saying. He, he's kids. Good. Yeah. He's real good. Isaac Dolgarian. I've watched him. He's he's very well rounded, which is a featherweight. You have to be, yeah. You know, featherweight, lightweight, bantamweight. If you if you're not well rounded, you're you're gonna get exposed. So both guys are really good. Uh, I think it's Dolgarian's first fight in the UFC. Though. Okay, and uh, I think that might the nerves. Can you click you know, on him, Dave? Yeah, first one just might be. Am I right or wrong? No, he's that? got. No, he did. He's he already one. fought there. He's I'm got sorry. One. Francis wrong. Marshall, TKO punches elbows. Okay, so he so he's ready then. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm totally wrong on that. <laughs> uh Mitch Ramirez versus Tiago uh Tiago Moises. Yep. Look, we we know what Tiago can do on the ground. He's he's very good in the stand up. He's got good uh yeah, good stand up, good power. Mitch Ramirez has got a lot of good stand up. Yeah. Good power. Uh I, I tell you what, this is one of those ones. It might be Rip Mitch Ramirez getting the best of Tiago if Tiago doesn't have a good night. Yeah, he hasn't been. Ha- he didn't have a good night his last fight, and yep. he needs to get back on track. 
But I think what he kind of forgot about is that getting him to the dance is grinding on the wrestling. Utilizing utilizing his stand up to get more into the grill and then trying to get some top pressure, control the control the pace of the fight. Look, sometimes the best thing to do is to get back on the win track is fight that safe fight. Get that win. Get yourself and get your mental back on track of hey, this is the way I know I can fight. Let me control the top position. Let me do some damage. Let me grow my um my confidence back up. And I think if he's gonna have if he's gonna have the win against Mitch Ramirez, he's gonna have to get back to a little bit of the wrestling. Controlling yeah. that top position because he didn't, he hasn't looked like the guy that I saw fight Islam years ago. Now, I know a lot's changed since then, but look, it, the growth hasn't happened as much in him as it has like Armand Sarukian and no, other, no, and other no. fighters. And so you've got to start asking yourself, why? Why are we not seeing the growth that we've seen? You guys kind of came up around the same time. You actually were here before Sarukian was. Why are yep. we not seeing the growth that we've seen in, in Armand? So those are questions to be answered. Yeah. Nate Levy against Mike Davis. That's a good fight. Nate Levy's got that uh, very long, tall, lanky mm -hmm. build. Tends to be good everywhere. He's, he's good on the feet. He's got a lot of good kicks. Mm -hmm. His submission game is not bad. Mike Davis. Mike Davis goes out there trying to rip your head off and stuff. So these guys match up well. The one that is Kulabau versus <clears throat> Danny Silva. Yeah. Should be a fun fight, man. Kulabau, to me, is a fantastic fighter. So fun to watch, man. He's constantly moving, bouncing on his toes, letting the striking go. But he can grapple. He can do everything. He's always very well-rounded. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how well he does moving you know, against Danny Silva. Danny Silva, 8-1. Yeah. Should be a good fight. It should be. You got Jacqueline Amorim, who you know well, yep, I going do. up against Corey McKenna, who is... Fun to watch. Corey McKenna is like, she got arms about this long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she goes out there and she fights. And the real thing she's got to do is she's got to make it through the first round. Yep. Uh, that's the real you know thing with Jacqueline. Jacqueline will go through a shitload of submission attempts mm -hmm. and burn herself out or mm -hmm. she'll get the submission. So she's just got to learn. What, she's got to learn happens. to control the top position. Not, you know, not, not. Let it all out in the first round. Now, I'm not yeah. saying you should fight at a pace that's too slow to where you're just constantly thinking, I'm going to get tired, I'm going to get tired. But you've got to fight at a pace that you know you can control, that you can control throughout the, the rounds, three rounds. This, this is where you run into a case where she just didn't get as much work in the lower level shows to get all those things worked out. And I know her. I was texting with her back and forth a little bit before she went to the UFC. She was fighting in the LFA. And the conversations were, well, I'm going to be, she was the champion there in the LFA. I'm going to fight here. As soon as I become champ, I'm going to go to the UFC. You need to take those moments in the LFA. You came from strictly, and I mean strictly jujitsu, yeah. world-class level jujitsu. The problem is. Amateur level stand. -up. Amateur, not even amateur. It's like, <laughs> it's, you know, like she had never trained stand up ever. Yeah. And she relied in the lower level shows. You can get away with world-class jujitsu. Sure. And we're yeah. seeing when you get to the big show, not just with her, Mackenzie Dern. Yes. Like it's Mackenzie Dern's as good on the ground as you will find. Yes. You know, and look, I don't care how good you are on the ground. If you can't get it there. Yep. And well, they're, they're running those years. They're running into the same problem, John, except Mackenzie Dern's got better stand up than, than Jack, the Jackie yeah. here. <laughs> I call her Jack, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's, She's and, and Mackenzie Dern's got better stand up than her, so she's got to get that worked out. I think she will. She's still young, I think she's only like 29, 28, 29. So she's got a little bit of time, but she's got to be committed to it. You know, I know that Mackenzie Dern's committed to it, but what she's not committed to is the wrestling portion of it all. Like, she, she her stand up is not bad, it's enough to close the distance and get in there, you know, yeah, against tough. someone. She just Look, doesn't have the wrestling to get the fight to the ground once they clinch. Mackenzie Dern, yeah, Jackie doesn't have that either. So you're running into these positions where she gets in the clinch. She's doing stuff that she does shouldn't be doing to put herself on bottom just to get to the takedown. That's not what you want to be against these people because jiu-jitsu goes out the door when you get punched in the face. Bottom, the bottom is not a good place to normally be. Yeah, I try. I, I wish you could explain to these top-level jiu-jitsu practitioners when they come into MMA, like you're basically white and blue belt level. What were you in white and blue belt level? You're the one taking it on the bottom fucking when you were a white and blue belt level. 
And when I when I it's own my true. gyms, it's true, right? Yeah, it's true. And I say when when I tell I tell all the white belt and blue belt um people that are in, like in my gyms or in my classes or whenever I teach, your white and blue belt times are the moments you learn all your defense. Cause you're getting smashed. You're getting arm barred, you're getting triangled. This is when we teach you all the defense. This is when you kind of learn the defenses on your own, you know? Yeah. And when you get to purple belt, you're kind of figuring out your top game, but you're still getting smashed by the Browns and the, and the blacks. But then when you get to the Brown belt level, you should be doing the smashing. And then black belt is obviously, Hey, now you're kind of, you know, rolling, rolling the little bit of the King of the mountain there, but that blue and per that blue and, and white belt level is you just learning all your defense. But when you're in jujitsu or when you're in MMA, you become a blue belt, blue belt, and white belt, a blue belt and white belt level fighter when you're on bottom yeah. in this game. It doesn't matter Absolutely. how good the other person is on top. So they haven't quite understood that yet. I've always thought, you know, Eddie, I helped Eddie Bravo put together a long time ago the combat jujitsu mm -hmm. and his rule set and everything. I always thought it was a great concept that he came up with. And uh, I tell guys all the time if you're, you know, a good grappler and you're, they're talking about going to MMS, you should try Eddie's uh, combat jujitsu first. It'll tell you a lot about, do you like getting hit? Can you accept being hit? Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people, you know, they fold it and, you know, that's all open hand and you still get people oh, getting knocked out. Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. Got to learn how to slap that open hand, man. Most of my street fights when I was younger was all open handed. I was, I, I was just protecting my hands. I was hoping one day I'd be a real fighter. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I was like, man, these are going to be my money makers. You, you had forecast the future. Yeah, huh? they made me some money, but I mean, I was more worried that, oh man, I won't be able to knock people out if I break my hands. I wasn't able to knock people out regardless. So it didn't, it didn't help that I didn't, I was knocking everyone out with open hand. Jeez, man, man, I, I should have fought everything open handed. Yeah, Stockton, Stockton slap, baby. All right, guys. Well, hey, that's going to wrap up our show for today. Make sure you guys to go to Wayne Amherst.com. It's not the show. Oh, wait. It's not Whoa, that. we're screwing this up again. Oh, we are. Go ahead, Dave. Good thing we got Dave. Let's get here. us back on track. All right, let's get back on track here. John, you oh. posted. I didn't oh. post that. John. On Instagram. I well, did not post that. Dude. John the Punk McCarthy. <laughs> Sorry, John. Technicality there. You okay. reposted it. You reposted it. <laughs> oh, my wife must have reposted it. Do you still have that uh, t shirt? John. Ah, uh, yeah. In a box. I posted guess. 30 years ago. It's actually uh, March 11th, and you're hearing this later than March 11th. But wow. March 11th, 1994. Big John refereed his first mixed martial arts wow. event. Wow. Yes, right in Denver, there. Colorado. John. <laughs> Give us yeah. some insight here. Tell us something we don't know about this event. Oh my God. What a shit show. <laughs> what a shit show. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you, you know, it's so funny if you go to because that had 16 uh fighters on that show. It was uh it was a lot a lot going on in that show. And it was at a place called the Mammoth Gardens Event Center in Denver, Colorado. The first UFC was at the McNichols Arena, which was where the Denver Nuggets played at that time. It was the big thing. Well, this one was the Mammoth Gardens Event Center was close to the biggest shithole you've ever been in. It was, it was horrible. And then on top of that, they had the guys warming up. They, they, there was nowhere for them to really warm up in the actual, you know, if you want to call it arena. It was like a bar dance club. Okay. So they rented rooms across the alley for people. Hoist didn't have to be there. Hoist had a little place in the Mammoth Gardens event center he could warm up since that's what you get when you're the promoter's brother. Yeah. But, <laughs> no bias. But the there. rest of them, dude, they, they rent these rooms. It is hype central. There is needles. There's more people fucking getting, you know, lace heroin and stuff going on. I'm like unbelievable you go back to it and to, to look at everything that happened and how it happened it was amazing but in the end the final fight was patrick smith who rest in peace patrick is no longer with us but you know patrick was from the denver area and he was always a uh, you know, crazy but a good guy and uh, you, you look at every everything that happened in that event and all the stuff it was horrible for me i will tell you right now you know, the first fight of the night for me, the, my very first fight I ever refereed was a guy named Sean Dougherty, 18 years old, Josh. 
Scroll down there, Dave. He's got to be on that card. Oh, he'll be on there. Sean Dowry. There you go. Right there. First. Fight. Right. Uh, and look at the length of time. It was against Scott Morris. <laughs> right. 20 seconds. He fr- turns him over. Top side guillotine. Right. And I go. All right. And then the next one is Pat Smith. And he's facing a guy I knew in Ray Wizard, who was a karate guy out of Long Beach. Uh, and he gets him in a guillotine. And it's, you know. Ray actually almost starts to tap with his foot and goes out. So I stop it. And I'm thinking at that time, I'm thinking, all right, this is going to, this is easy. This is no problem. Right. (laughs) From that moment on, my life turned into a living hell because the next fight was Johnny Rhodes against this guy, David Levicki, who claimed he was a seal. Right. I said, the only is I love these guys that lie about what they've done and stuff, but. He's wearing, you know, uh, Johnny Rhodes is wearing, you know, uh, gi pants and he's got a jock strap on and David Levicki puts him in guard and is like kicking his legs, trying to push him back. And the only thing going back is Johnny Rhodes's gi pants. So I got a full moon going on inside of the Mammoth Gardens Event Center and I'm trying to pull up his pants. And as soon as I pull him up, that freaking Levicki would kick his feet, put him down right. I was like, I wanted to kill somebody. So I was touching man ass into the third Love fight. It. Right. And so that one finally ends. You get the one of the greatest. It was John. Break. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, 12 minutes in round number one. What the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. Okay. That because there was never a time limit back then. No time limits, dude. The fight went, if it went three hours, it was going to go three hours. Fucking, we got a casual as a producer. I swear to yeah. God. <laughs> he has no idea what was going fuck? on back then. He you got to pro- figure, there was two rules in this entire show. The two rules were no biting and no eye gouging. Everything else was legal. Everything. <laughs> and, and I was not allowed to stop a fight. The only way I, I could stop a fight, according to the rules was I see a fighter tap out or I, the corner throws in the towel. That's it. So if a guy gets knocked unconscious, I was supposed to just stand there. Oof. If the guy's going after him and hitting him more, I'm going to stand there. Wow. Right? Oh, dude, it got bad. But the the next one where it says, it says Frank Hamaker, it was Freak, F-R-E-K, Freak okay. Hamaker, against the greatest name ever in MMA history. Thaddeus Luster. <laughs> God, what a great, great name. That's a great name, man. Dude, I'm telling you, it was horrible. I had so many bad things happen in that show, but eventually we got through it. Oh, man. And uh, I said I would never do it again. I told I told the, all of them. John, you did every done. single one of these done. fights. Every one, dude. Oh, every one of man. them. Yep. So uh, that, was, that was the start of my career. Pretty much no one from the first uh, UFC one, huh? From UFC Just one, twice. it was, yeah, because uh, Ken Shamrock was supposed to be in it mm-hmm. and he broke his wrist. Hmm. Jason DeLucia, yeah. if you see there, Jason was the alternate in yep, UFC, UFC one. He beat a guy named Trent Jenkins. Mm-hmm. And so they put him in this one. Got it. Got it. He actually had a really good uh, first match if you go back down there. Um, uh, I want to say the kid's name was Baker, Scott Baker. Yeah. Yep. Jason Delucia beating Scott Baker. And they actually, they were going through some submission attempts. It was really actually, both guys were supposedly strikers. They're all, they're all on the ground, but it was actually a good fight. They did well. People don't realize how difficult it was to, I, I fought my, I fought several of my first fights were 10 minute long or 15 minute long first rounds. Uh-huh. It was a 10 minute, it was either a 10 minute, ma- like first round, like one round, 10 minutes, or it was a 15 minute, one round, or it was 10. Cause then when pride kind of came around, it was 10 minute with a five minute round. People started watching pride. So then the rules kind of changed in Idaho, like cables hey, do one 10 minute round, then one five minute round. And yeah, it was a, it was, and then, then the UFC started there was doing the five, five, five. So five minute, five minute, five. So we started doing 15 minutes, five minute rounds. Yep. I mean, things had changed so much, and you were talking about, oh, we were in this shitty ass place, man. Most of the fights that I had early in my career were like in those, you know, you know, the Garden Arena in in Oregon. What's that one in Portland? Oh, the Rose, the, the, Rose, the Rose Garden. 
it's got yeah. you know the stands are here the balcony and then the they have the stage off to the right and then they have the you actually the locker rooms were downstairs in like the basement area or whatever always yeah i mean <laughs> nasty <laughs> just what a shithole man <laughs> what oh, yeah. a shithole but it is yeah. what it is man we the things we did we did it because we love the sport and god knows we weren't getting paid a lot I mean, nope. not pretty much nothing. I paid twenty five bucks for my first fight, made one hundred fifty bucks my second fight, uh, made three hundred my third. You know, it's like, and then it was like five hundred, five hundred, five hundred for a while. But you know, but that was a lot of money. Like you were lucky, and I was main eventing some of this shit. You know, if, and they <laughs> they'd, they'd always call you on a week's notice. So you always yeah. had to be training. Oh, we want you to fight. One of the fights I had to take was against the. I showed up, and he was the promoter. His mom, his dad, his wife, and his brother, or sorry, his, his, uh, not his brother, his, uh, wrestling coach in high school was the ref. His mom, dad, and, uh, wife were the judges. And then his something, it was, it was very skewed. It was very skewed. Just a little? (laughs) Just a tad. And then we thought we were going to get there and get a hotel. No, no. He's like, there's a campsite down on the river. So we we camped. We brought oh, our sleeping Jesus. bags and we camped down. We were river. living in a van yeah. down by the river. It was so bad, John. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. And then Trevor was supposed to fight on that card. Prangley didn't fight because they just didn't. They didn't have the money to pay him. So he. We were all like, we want to get paid now. <laughs> and he's like, uh, it was. It was bad. We were supposed to fight inside a cage. We show up. It was a wrestling mat on the floor. <laughs> was, oh, there you go. It was it. That's perfect. That yeah, what a disaster. Anyway, hey. that that first show though, there was one thing I, I gotta say. The guy Scott Morris, who had the first fight of the night, he ends up fighting uh, Pat Smith, who obviously went to the finals. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people have seen that fight, and it's where you see a guy and he's mounted and he's just getting, and he's got blood streaking all over his face. And you know, again, I wasn't I wasn't able to stop the fights, and so I had told. Here, here's one of the things I remember was. I, we had a rules meeting, you know, the night before the fights. And so I did the rules meeting, right? And I'm sitting up and standing up there, you know, I'm saying, you know, if your fighter is in trouble, you know, I'm, I'm kind of banging on this thing, right? <laughs> and I'm just saying stuff and I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just saying, I'm just talking, right? And Hickson gets up and he comes up and he goes, John, my friend, you got to stop. You're scaring everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> He goes, nobody's going to (laughs) fight. Oh, okay. I had no idea. But anyways, the Scott Morris, I wasn't allowed to stop it. Scott Morris is getting killed by Pat Smith. And so I'm screaming at his corner, who was Robert Busey's Warriors International, right? Mm R-B-W-I. And uh, I'm screaming at him, you know, throw the fucking towel. And I'm screaming, throw the fucking towel, right? And they look at me and shake their head and throw it into the audience. And that's when I got pissed. And so I, you motherfuckers. And, I said, and Pat Smith gets up. Right. And thank God he thought I told him to stop. Ah, Right. Thank God. He's, you know, thought I said, cause I was like, I, what am I going to do? Yeah. I'm not supposed to stop it. This is how I got the job because the other guys in the first time stopped it. So I was like, Oh man, wow. and so many things happened that you go, I'm so lucky that he did that because the sport wouldn't be here. No. So it's all Jeez. crazy. Yeah, he would have died. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, man. Jeez. Oh, the history. Good old story time with Big John McCarthy. <laughs> Good old story. <laughs> I time. love it. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, I want to thank you guys so much and uh, go to WayneAndMerch.com. Pick up some of our short. Look, the weather's getting nice. It was 80 degrees Whoa, here in Texas. Tell me 80 about degrees it. here in North Dallas. We were loving it today. It's supposed to be 85 tomorrow. Hold it. You sent me a picture, man. I'll tell you oh. what. They were uh, treating the kids good there, oh, man. Oh, it's they, nice. There was some cool stuff. Our community has this thing where they, they do one or two events every month for the kids in the HOA. And this uh, today, they had the rock climbing wall and these like bungee things that the kids- Bungee had. jumping bungee things. Bungee jumping cool. on a big trampoline. So it was pretty awesome, man. I want to see you on one of them bungee things. Shit, my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, uh, I kid you not. We went to this jump house on Sunday. Awesome. Dave actually sent me a thing on yes or yesterday or today. Hey, this looks pretty cool. I was like, we just were there two days ago. It <laughs> kid you not. It's almost like a full acre of jump houses. 
it's oh. all one big jump house and like it's got like american ninja warrior inside it it's got a racetrack inside it where you race the person next to you like obstacles monkey bars it's freaking pretty damn awesome and what i love the most it's clean the whole thing it was outside so i'm sure like on a really hot day it can get kind of hot oh, for the kids bad, yeah. but it was actually beautiful on sunday it was about i'd say 71 72 degrees awesome and what i like is that they also they only sold they said you have to reserve your time slots so it doesn't get too busy and so you, your kids can bounce around without being trampled on by other kids and it was it was pretty damn awesome I thought it was so That's awesome nice. that Dave sent me and he said, Hey man, what, what do you think about this? This looks pretty cool. I was like, <laughs> we were just there, man. If you come up, we'll go again. Cause the kids loved it. They That's loved awesome. it. Uh, go to Wayne pick up some of our uh, short sleeves. They're available there. Uh, obviously summer is coming. So let's go, let's go. And uh, John, take us away, bud. Hey, for everyone, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were not bored with the stories, <laughs> but that's what happens when you have an old man talking. So we will see you later. <laughs>